intend a standard practice in your news department. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Ang nangyari po sa interview... Madam, the question is answerable by yes or no. Is splicing the content a standard procedure being adopted in the news department of ABS-CBN? It is not standard for us to splice to maliciously mislead, Your Honor. You are saying that the good congresswoman is telling a lie. I am saying, Your Honor, that the sound bite was shortened, but there were other, there was a basis for that. She swore bite. upon the grave of her father that that particular interview never happened. The interview happened over DZMM, Your Honor. Precisely. But what was shown was the interview in TV Patrol, which he denies. So, maliwanag po na in-splice ninyo. At malinaw talaga nakita rin namin. Huwag kayong magalala pa. Pakukuha din natin yun. At siguro lalo nating malilinawan yun. Ang sinasabi lang natin dito, sana magpakatapat na kayo. Mula't mula pa kasi sinasabi na namin ito eh. Kung hindi po standard ang splicing ng content, sinasabi po ninyo nagsisinungaling ang aming kasama rito. Hindi Is that you are trying to imply? Hindi po, Your Honor. Oh, ang sinasabi paano ngayon? ko lang po, ine-edit po namin ng mga video at sound bites, pero hindi po para magsinungaling o mag-mislead sa aming storya. May I repeat that? That particular interview never existed according to her. Pinipilit nyo, it existed. And you edited the content. Either you are implying that the good congresswoman is lying, or you are thinking of something else. No, Your Honor. Ang practice po kasi, minsan, nag interview po kami sa ibang platforms, and then gagamitin po yon sa mas maikling version sa ibang programa. Yun po ang nangyayari doon. But if the motivation is to deceive the public into believing that she did apologize to a particular organization na hindi naman talaga nangyari, ang biktima rito ay yung publiko. She was at the sick bed of her father. Nakita niya yun. Nasakit, hindi ba? Ito yung pinag-uusapan natin. And then, kanina, sinasabi ninyo na meron kayong code of ethics, meron kayong strict ethical guidelines. At ang sinabi mo pa nga, eh, isinasabuhay ng mga reporters at mga journalists ang inyong code of ethics, ganun din yung KBP broadcast code. Tama po. Opo. Alam niyo ba na habang ginaganap natin ang pagdinig dito sa kapulungan ito, I can remember, I think that's uh, the first week of June, when one of your reporters texted me twice. Initially, was, I wasn't able to answer him sapagkat alam naman ninyo ang trabaho rito, kasagsagan until I finally responded to his text messages. He was asking me to clarify and reconcile some of those things that he wanted me to clarify or reconcile. Sabi ko sa kanya sa text messages, <clears throat> baka mas maganda sana kung sa house na lang, kung available. Chinek niya, the house is not available because at that time, Binabawal na because of physical distancing. Okay, so sabi niya, by text messages again, pwede ho ba kayo sa Zoom? Sabi ko, okay lang sa akin yan. Did you know that the only condition I ask of him is that dapat meron na sanang ibang mga reporters din sa ibang networks because I, I recall that some of them also asked for an interview and I was not able to comply. 
Sabi naman niya, okay po. So, we will schedule a, uh, a Zoom conference by tomorrow at 10.30 in the morning and he will text me the link. Siguro yan mga between 4 o'clock to 4.30 ng hapon. At about 7 o'clock in the evening, ayun, pumitada na siya. At ang sinasabi pa niya doon, parang ako pang may kasalanan na matagal na raw niya akong kinokontak, ayaw ko naman daw sumagot at ang gusto ko pa raw kinabukasan. Eh sino ba yung nagpilit na makipag-zoom sa akin, hindi ba siya? He practically suppressed that information na siya ang nag-alok sa akin na mag-zoom kami. At pumayag naman ako, believing that that is the best way to reconcile those things. Ganun pa man, bumanat na siya ng alas 7, was still waiting na baka naman matuloy pa yung 10.30 namin, naghihintay ako. At 9 o'clock, nag-text siya sa akin, nagsosorry, sabi niya, as after... Conferring with my bosses, sabi niya, hindi pala pwede kanya na makipag-zoom ako at saka yung ibang network sa mga politiko. Can you imagine? Alam mo ba, ang ginawa ko kauna-unahang pagkakataon is to reproduce those text messages. At yung umaga na yun, binigay, binigyan ko ng kopya si Mr. Carlo Katigbak. And to his credit, he apologized to me. Believing that he will ask. Sinabi naman niya, mayayaan niyo po pagsasabihan ko. Ang kinausap ko po is the President and CEO of ABS-CBN. Kung wala naman sigurong duda na gagawa niya ng paraan yun. Alam ba niyo yung nangyari, kinagabihan? Dinoble niya ulit. Kasama pa yung isang angkorin niyo na tagabasa ng balita. At lalong naggrabe, pinalilitaw nila na, <clears throat> na sa screen, doon do, sila marunong eh, pinalilitaw nila that there were five franchise bills na ako ang principal author. Bago pa nangyari yun eh, nag-usap na sila ng akin chief of staff eh. Ang sabi ng akin chief of staff, to my recollection, sabi niya, ni wala pa kaming kasi ang, ang salita niya, pangunahing may akda, the principal author. Meron po akong kopya ng certification ng House of Representatives. Kung may interesado po kayo, bibigyan ko po kayo ng kopya. Totoo po yun, wala po akong iniakda kahit anong uh, prangkisa, kung prangkisa lang ang pag-uusapan. Nangyayari po na kumisan ang pangalan ng bawat isa sa amin na ihahalo na parang co-authors. Kung minsan po, consolidated po yon. somebody will move that all members present or the members of the Franchise Committee be made co-authors of this bill. Something that we cannot control. Ang ginawa niya sana, pumunta siya rito sa House of Representatives, kumuha ng certification. Alam po ninyo ang pinakamabuting ebidensya doon, yung initiatory bill. Kasi nakapirma po yun. May pirma ako doon kung sakasakali. Kung sakaling nirepile ng ibang kasama namin. Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe for more Philippines news today. Have a nice day.